Get on in here. Yeah. It's that time. And I have got a great topic for today. Yep, I've got a really good topic for today for those of you who are just getting in here. We're going to look at what is standing in our way. Yeah, sometimes there are some things standing in our way, and we don't know what those are. But y'all get on in here. Uh, we're going to work on a baby step to start with as soon as we get a couple hundred people in here. But for right now... I'm going to get think today's the 22nd. Yep. And let me put this right there. That's my So we're getting close to having enough people. It got cold here last night. I mean, really cold. The rhododendron leaves were just like my little magic wand, tight little curls like this. And they're just uh, amazing little temperature gauges. <laughs> I love my rhododendrons. Okay, so today is uh, our 22nd day of our baby steps. This is from our book, Chaos to Clean in 31 Easy Baby Steps. And this is what we're going to talk about a little bit today. Has perfectionism stopped you from making a control journal? Yeah, you can get obsessed on a control journal. You really can. But it doesn't have to be it doesn't have to be spectacular. It just has to be done. Let go of your per perfectionism and procrastination goes away. It really does. If you will let go of your perfectionism, procrastination will go away. So, got the book ready for tomorrow. M bookmarked and everything. But right now I want to talk about what's standing in your way besides the perfectionism. And perfectionism is a part of it because we are, we want everybody to like us. We want everybody to like us. And we look for the smallest little thing to, um, To use an ex as an excuse to not declutter. Yep. Clutter is what is standing in your way. Lots of different, and I'm going to dissect the clutter just a little bit. Because we have clutter from um, things that we've purchased. Yeah, we've spent money on things that um, we probably shouldn't have spent, but we've... Uh, and, and we we paid a lot of money for them. And my hair is sticking out. It's driving me nuts. That's my perfectionism. When, when we have something we paid a lot of money for. And we see it. We see what we, we have spent on that one thing. And when we let go of, of that. When we let go of what we spent. Because right now... It's cluttering up your countertops. It's you've got all this stuff in your closets. You're doing, you know, everything has has taken over prime real estate in your home. And if you're moving and you're downsizing just a little bit and you have all this clutter and you move into a smaller house, some people have referred to them as cracker boxes. But guess what? You can't take it all with you. So let's look at what some of that clutter is. It's stuff you've purchased. Let's just say it could be something that you purchased at a yard sale and you paid 10 cents on the dollar for it. But you thought it was a good deal. So you got this great deal on things. You don't want to lose that because you paid good money for it. Even though it was a good deal, you still paid your money. And you don't want to let go of it. <coughs> Let's look at other things. Inheritance. Yep. What if you inherited something? I have, have a friend who inherited a whole house 
of her grandmother's clutter. A whole house. And it has pulled her down like you wouldn't believe. But she has gotten it decluttered. And she's getting it fixed up so she can put it on the market. Because it's an asset to her. She's got to get rid of it. For it to bless her. And let's think about all the things that you have collected over the years from your ancestors. What are some of the, I mean, we have had, we have had people tell us that they still have the last Kleenex box their grandmother used. Oh my goodness. I just... I just don't even know what to say about that. The last Kleenex box. It's a Kleenex box. It should be recycled. But what if you've got special items? Like, um, I have one thing from my mother. Let me open this little drawer. If I can get to it. I know what's in here. Yep, because this is where I keep it. Let me get it out. I have a little box, little cloisonne box that has a rose in it that Justin gave me one year for Mother's Day. But this is the only thing I have that was my mother's. It's tiny. I don't have to have something big to remember her. I don't need that. All I need is I have I have what's up here. But it's a little tiny box. Little tiny box. I have a griddle that was my grandmother's. Cast iron griddle. Guess what? I don't have to have that to remember her. I remember her every day. Every day. Because her the words that were in her that came out of her mouth trained me trained me so I don't have to have something that was especially hers to remember that now I have some quilts that were my step grandmothers I think I have one uh, but quilts they're fabric fabric fades over time and is while they're still beautiful take pictures of them and as they fall apart, um, frame a square. But you can't keep everything. You can't hold on to everything. Odds and ends pieces of furniture that you don't like, that aren't your style. What are they doing in your house? Well, you can cover them up with a tablecloth, I guess. But if you don't love it, Get rid of it. Here's the rule. When people, well, this isn't a rule, this is, this is common sense. When people give you things out of their house, it's because it was clutter to them first. It was clutter to them first. Now, if they give you something that, that's wonderful, a, a, a little tiny memento of, of them, someone was talking about a necklace her grandmother gave you. Those things are precious, but they don't take up a lot of room. When you have to lug around uh, and move from house to house because you have, I'll, I'll use this one example, a pipe, uh, not a pipe organ, a pump organ, an old timey pump organ that doesn't even work. How does that bless you? How does that bless you? It may have been your grandmother's. Now, I have a vanity that used to be a pump organ. But Robert's grand, great grandfather gave it to the church and they didn't want it. So you know what he did with it? He stripped everything out of it, all the mechanism. And he turned it into a desk with little drawers and cubby holes. So my vanity 
was a piece of clutter to, to a church and it's turned into a lovely piece of furniture for, for my life. Get rid of your clutter. Pretend to move. And if you are moving, don't move anything you don't love. Put it on the curb and put a free sign on it. Bless someone else with your abundance. It may not be cluttered to somebody else. It is cluttered to you. And if you try to put it in your house, you're just going to make yourself crazy. Because every time you look at it, you're going to say, I hate that. You should not have anything in your home that you do not love and that you do not um, have a place for. You need to make the room in your home for the things you love and adore, not for the stuff that is just going to be a source of agony and anxiety for you. We need beautifully, beautiful spaces. And you're good. You are really good at making a beautiful space special to you. Somebody told me once when they came into our home, mine and Robert's home, that it looked just like us. You know why it looks just like us? Because we only have the things we love in our home. That's it. It's all we've got. It's not a lot, but we have what we love, what we love. So let go of this clutter that's holding you back. Even if it is inherited clutter, it's still clutter. You cannot organize clutter. You have to get rid of it. Just because it's a good thing. A good piece of furniture doesn't mean it's good for you. Put a free sign by the curb. It'll be picked up within an hour. I guarantee it. Somebody may see it and have to run back and get a truck to get it, but they'll pick it up. Get it by the curb. Do what you need to do to get it out of your life because it is nothing but pulling you down. It's saying, you got to take care of me. Think about having... I mean, if we were to downsize, we would probably take the keyboard with us, but we wouldn't take our pump organ. It has a place in our front room, and it's not clutter to us. We do have a pump organ. <laughs> I've tried to sell it. Nobody wants it. It's still there, but it it looks pretty. And it's, you know, it's sort of a history wall, so it has a purpose to it. But if I downsize, I wouldn't take it with me. I wouldn't. I'd take my printer and my printer table and my baskets because they're, they're handy. I'd, I'd actually take my vanity. I love my vanity. And I could get another chair. I'm not attached to my chair. It's comfortable. I can get a lot of things done sitting in that chair. The main thing is... Only surround yourself with things you love and that you have a place for. That's how you do it. Things you love and that you have a place for. And when you do that, you're going to change your whole persona. When you walk in your home, your home is going to hug you. That's a feeling you can never get tired of. Ever get tired of. So folks, eliminate the clutter. You'd be surprised at how much you can get rid of and not even miss. And that's why our motto this year is decluttering gently in 2020 teaches us that just enough is plenty. I mean, think about our kitchens. How many pots and pans do you need? You only have four eyes on your stove. And you have an oven that'll hold two or three pans. Now we need we need a cookie sheet. We need cake pans. Um, we need 13 by 9 pans. But we need an iron skillet. We need a griddle. We need something to cook pasta in. Or boil soup. Or, 
or make a stew, we need our crock pots. When you eliminate the things that you hardly ever use, I mean, we could go into our, our utensil drawer right now and declutter 10 items, I guarantee you. We can go into our closets and get rid of the fat clothes that we've lost weight and can't wear anymore. We could do five items. Doing just five items isn't, doesn't feel, it takes, a, it takes a minute to pull a, to pull five items out of your closet. So folks, please don't clutter, don't clutter up your new home with things that you don't love. If you have a home and you love your home, then get rid of the clutter that you've packed into all those cubby holes. Go to one shelf and, and pull three items off of one shelf. This week we're in our master bedroom. Go declutter five items from your closet. Yes, those clothes are saying ugly words to you. And we talked about this in Body Clutter. Come on back, baby. I know you really liked me and you can still wear me if you just gain a few more pounds. Oh, you can't wear me anymore. Nope, nope, no, nope, no. Nope. You were in high school last time you wore this. You have had too many babies and you're not getting back into me. So, But why are you holding on to it? Your cheerleading uniform, why are you holding on to it? Let it go. Let it go. Don't be reminded of these things. Don't do it. Every item in your house has a memory attached to it. It can either be a good memory or it can be a bad memory. I only want you to think of happy thoughts when you see the things in your home. If you see something that makes you feel bad when you look at it, Honey, it's time for it to go away. I don't even think you should take a picture of it. I don't even think you should hold on to the picture of it. Let it go. Sing the song. Please release me from Engelbert Humperdinck. Please release me. Let me go. Because the stuff wants to be loved by somebody else. Or sing the Frozen song, you know? Let it go, let it go, let it go. Now, wedding albums, that's a different story because if you have children with that husband, you should save those pictures for your children because that is, is part of their history. My mama got rid of everything. I only have pictures of mine and mama and daddy's wedding from my grandmother. Somebody asked me a question. I got to go back. What about all the stuff on your tables? Well, Miss Shelley, this is, this is my table. It's not your table. It's my table. And this is my room. This is my room. So let me explain to you what all of this stuff is. Because it makes me happy. It doesn't have to make you happy. It makes me happy. So... I have a little dice that my husband made me. Makes me very happy. I play this game with you every every day. I have a little game here that my husband made these little tiles and we have this wonderful thing that we play. It's called Weekly Home Blessing Hour. Have you ever joined us on a Monday or a Tuesday when we do that? I have a timer that changes your life. Uh, Robert made me a magnifying glass where I could just Look at things, but I can also play like I'm on romper room. These are props. I have a switch that my husband made me because I needed a prop that said we can flip the switch because I flip the switch on salt. Flip the switch on salt. We can flip the switch on sodas. We can do a lot of things with this switch. I have my water bottle. It's empty, but I have it. And I need to fill it up to keep it in here so that I always have water. 
And then I have my little tiara. Now this tiara, I've never had a tiara before. Leanne, when she moved here, she bought me a tiara. This is from my best friend. She bought me a tiara. How beautiful is that? We all need to feel special. Sometimes you just need to put on your tiara and look in the mirror. And then I have my picture cube. It has a purpose. It's got Kleenexes in it. But I just didn't want any old Kleenex box. So I have filled my Kleenex box with wonderful pictures of things that make me happy. I got this, this little note card at a conference. And it's a rose. Roses make me happy. And then I have a picture of our, our Savior taking the cross. We all have a cross to bear. And then I have St. Therese. I went to her shrine. I got this at her shrine and, and had a wonderful epiphany while I was there. And then I also went to the, the shrine of our mother of Guadalupe. If you don't know this story, look it up on Wikipedia because this is a beautiful story, a beautiful story. But I went to that shrine and it's right on the Mississippi River up in Wisconsin. So this is my little picture cube. I have a little box that Robert gave me that's full of mementos. The, and then I have the untire of knots is a picture over here. This lamp, this lamp was made for me by Ashton Dodge, Eric's little brother. It's, it's out of a Joshua tree. He made it for me and sent it to me for my birthday. So I look at these things and they make me happy. My little joy bucket over here. It brings me much joy because it's my pamper, pampering package. It's a prop, but I use it. I got my angel book. So I am surrounded by things that I love. Yeah, you got me on my soapbox now. Yep, on my soapbox. So I have a wall over here that's full of things that I love. A picture that Robert made of a hawk. Hawks are very special in my life. I have a picture of a double rose, which is the, the rose that's on this cup right here. I made that picture in my garden. In my garden. A double rose. See how beautiful that is? This is a rose that Ben sent me when he was in prison. It, it gives, it's special. This is a little feather duster that a fly baby from Australia sent me. So, and this is a letter opener of a fish that my mother-in-law carved. She carved this fish. So, these are things that make me happy. And here's a, a pen that, that, that Eric Dodge gave me. It's out of turquoise. It's turquoise. <laughs> so folks, surround yourself with the things you love. And don't let other people put you down for them because they make you happy. They make you happy. Now, in my picture window over here, I have a huge picture window. I have a, a little piece of stained glass that is the Immaculate Heart of Jesus. And then I have a garden, and it's not in my garden, it's in my garden window, of um, a garden statue of St. Therese that Leanne gave me, that Leanne gave me. Now, my sister Susan, she didn't much like it. She thought it was an idol. But I look at the statue, and I remember being at the shrine. I remember reading her biography. When I see her, 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 she was 24 years old when she died. So surround yourself with things you love. And when you do that, 
Your home becomes your sanctuary. It hugs you every time you walk in the door. So folks, I'll see you at three o'clock. We have, um, we have a new package up. It is our back to basics package. It is more than 50% off. It's just the basics. It's a mop, chenille mop cloth, um, swish and swipe with vase package. Pur- that means in cl- purple rags are with that. Um, there's the rubber sweeper. So we got all these things. I've just sent out an email about it. We can do this. We can get rid of this clutter that's holding us back. We really can. We just have to, it has to pass. It has to go through a filtering process. Do you love it? Do you have a place for it? And if you don't, and if you don't love it and you don't have a place for it, then get rid of it. Get rid of it. That's all it is. Get rid of it. Bless someone else with it and you will have blessings come back to you. But when you hold on to it, think of it as manna from heaven. When you first start housekeeping, things things pour in from everybody. They when you first get your when you get your first apartment, all your family's just giving you anything they can come up with. You know? They want to give you things. But they don't want the things. They just want to help you start housekeeping. So they give you dishes they don't like. They give you everything. But guess what? As you are have the ability to get your own style, to know what your own style is, a lot of us don't even know what that is. We don't even know what we like. We just take what anybody will give us and we keep collecting it because of a lack of um, self-esteem. You know, we just, we don't, We think we have to keep it or we're going to hurt somebody's feelings. Guess what? They didn't want it when they gave it to you. And if it was inherited from somebody, then if it doesn't match things that you love, then you need to bless someone else with it. Don't let their clutter pull you down, even if it was out of love that they gave it to you. You cannot allow yourself to pull, be pulled down into this house full of things that don't make you happy. Bless someone else. Bless someone else. Put a free tag on it. You can do this. Set it out by the, set it out by the curb. Somebody's going to pick it up. They always do. And you'll be surprised at how fast it will happen. So don't forget about our sales. We got the half price sale on the multi one. And we have a half price sale on pink rags. And I know you've been wanting these because I keep one in my purse to clean my glasses with. And I, I'm doing it right now because I was having a hard time seeing. I, that's great for washing your makeup off. Some good things here. Tomorrow is our, is our Thursday. That's our question and answer day. Let's get some questions to Liz. Start a thread, Liz, and, and get some questions up so we can um, have some great questions tomorrow. And don't forget, decluttering gently. Declutter gently. Don't make yourself go nuts getting rid of clutter too fast because then you're going to go back and buy it all again. You don't want to do that. Gently declutter gently in 2020 teaches us that just enough is plenty. I love you all. I will see you at three o'clock. Got it. And our, 
Our coupon code is back number two basics. Back two basics for anything else in the fly shop that's not already deeply discounted. And we are running low on calendars. So if you've missed our calendars, you need to get it now because we're going to be out probably within a week. So don't wait. Love you all.